Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to put together a 4 or 8 ohm dummy load for testing audio amplifiers. Okay, let's go over the parts we're going to use. We have here an El Cheapo aluminum enclosure, which I got off of eBay. Um, dimensions are 30 centimeters wide, 5 centimeters high, and 10 centimeters deep. We are also going to use four power resistors. These are rated at 8 ohms, 100 watts. We're going to use uh, this hardware here to mount the resistors for 3 millimeter screws and 3 millimeter nuts. Of course, uh, I got these off of eBay too. I had to buy, um, well, as you can see, packs of each. We need two push down speaker terminals and we need some speaker wire then we have two single pole single throw heavy duty switches so we can switch between 4 and 8 ohms came off of ebay too I bought four plastic feet uh, for the enclosure that included uh, screws and nuts. We have two fuse holders and the uh, five ampere fuses to go with them. The first thing I did is lay out my resistors and mark the drill holes. There are a total of eight drill holes which I made and I marked. I just used a real small brush and some acrylic paint on my wife's to mark the holes. Next I ended up drilling the bottom plate holes. I did this freehand since I don't have a drill press at the moment. Just be sure when you do it that the metal is clamped down well. You don't want the drill catching the metal and causing the metal to turn real fast and cut yourself badly. This is a completed bottom plate. As you can see, I've mounted the load resistors and the feet. I then roughly laid out everything kind of like how I wanted it as you can see the switches are in the middle then come the speaker terminals and last on the outside are the fuse holders. Once I went ahead and figured out where I wanted everything on the front panel I went ahead and downloaded software called Front Panel Designer to make myself a template. I designed that, printed it out and then I'm going to tape the template to the front panel and then drill through that to make the holes. Yeah, before I forget, I have to mention that the software is free and in my opinion it's, it's pr works pretty good. Here you can see the template which I cut out and taped to the front panel. Next comes the drilling. Now this is my completed front plate which I drilled. The small holes worked out fine but the large holes didn't. Um, they turned out kind of oblong I guess because I wasn't using a drill press up so I had to use these tapered dreamers to um, enlarge the holes and make them more roundish which wasn't a problem because my enclosure is made out of aluminum. I guess I would strongly recommend using a drill press to um, drill through this aluminum. To remove the burrs caused by the drilling and reaming, I'm going to go ahead and use these metal files to smooth out the hole somewhat. This is a completed faceplate. I didn't use any rub-on letters or numbers. I just went ahead and turned the faceplate to switch around and then marked, uh, put a 4 and 8 on there to represent 4 and 8 ohms respectively.
Here's the actual completed unit without the cover on. The way I got it wired here when it's in the 8 ohm position, uh, I'm using one of the 8 ohm resistors and when I'm with the when it's in the 4 ohm position, I'm using both and the resistors are in parallel. Now, what I could have there differently as I see now for one thing, um, I think my metal's too flimsy here. It's only like I don't know how thick it is. I think it's like one millimeter, one millimeter or so, which is actually I think too too thin. Um, or I could put it. I guess I could put a little bracket in here. Stop this from moving when I push in on it. Well, you don't really like when you hit the switch, you really don't push in on it. Also, I could have added like a banana type jack instead of the fuse holders. I really don't think you need the fuse holders. Uh, that's just, an, I just put that in there as an added precaution. Right now there are five ampere fuses in there. Um, I guess it would just depend upon um, what size amplifiers or receivers you're working on since um, the most I've had so far was has been about um, I just work on low power stuff it's about 35 or 40 50 watts that's it um, these switches here I don't know I maybe could have used a size a little smaller and the I could have maybe repositioned the the resistors here maybe I could should have drilled the holes a little bit more toward the middle so the resistor wouldn't be touching the back here um, when I use this thing, I always, I normally always have the cover on, and to be honest, so far it really hasn't gotten that warm or hot. So those are the things I could have did differently. I think the main, my main uh, complaint is that I don't, uh, I don't have any uh, different kind of jacks. Like, for example, banana jacks. I should have added some of that. As far as the enclosure size is concerned, I guess I could live with it. I, I could have made it a uh, tiny bit. I could have gotten the enclosure a tiny bit larger, but I decided to go the, of course, the L cheapo route. Um, another mistake I had is I got the 4 and 8. I think I had it backwards. I had to go ahead and uh, just remove the my felt pin markings and then switched around otherwise I think for the money I paid I think I paid about around um I think it was around 55 55 to 60 dollars for everything so I guess it was an okay it was an okay project. I mean, I don't make these things all the time. Probably if I did like five of them or ten of them, they'd probably turn out pretty good. But I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it at leave it at that. And here's how it looks with the cover on. You can see when I press down here that the actually the metal moves a little bit. Um, Again, metal is kind of flimsy because I went so El Cheapo or I, maybe I should have put the uh, switches to the outside. I could have did that because it's more rigid here and the ends. But I'm not going to go ahead and make another one because this actually works fine. So it's basically the end of this project.